Hey everybody, welcome to Comics Class. I am Brandon Pallas, and today we are going to uh, get into the meat of our Simplified Anatomy series uh, and start with the neck and shoulders. Um, but first, let's start out with a little bit of warm-ups. Um, I hope you came ready to draw. Uh, go ahead and get your materials ready. Um, if you uh, want to stream your screen, you are welcome to. I will take a look um, occasionally and see what you guys are up to. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we'll start as usual with uh, some C curves. We we'll just do a little bit of this because we do this every time. But um, C curve is a fundamental line, super important, and it's good. It's important to get good at it. Just do a bunch of uh, just a bunch of them, different different lengths, different, uh, some tight ones, some long ones, you can kind of start to create uh, patterns, or like, sort of like, a, yeah, a pattern, I guess I'll call that, um, where they kind of, each one kind of relates to the last one. Do some real tight ones here, different directions. Almost every line you'll ever draw is going to be either a C curve or an S curve or a straight. Everything else is just uh, combinations and variations on those fundamentals. A few more. Let's see. Got a couple more people drawing. Let me pull those up. All right. Let's just do a few more. Different directions. Just different, different energy to the lines. This is all about just training your hand, making it uh, making it comfortable and smooth when you draw these lines. All right. Let's go on to S curves and just kind of do the same thing. Just a bunch of varying lines. Sometimes you can have a wide swing on one side and let it kind of almost straighten out the end, but that's still an S curve. have tight ones that are very much like a letter S. Go both ways on those. It's interesting to me how uh, how much better the regular S shape is than the backwards one. Don't have nearly as much practice. As that. And some nice looking, some nice looking S curves on these uh, work you guys are doing. This is super valuable to just do a whole lot of. Like, um, you know, I do this as a warm up because this is how I warm up. Uh, you know, I do a lot more than just this, uh, but I do like to like actively warm up my hand before drawing. So, a few more. Do some horizontal ones because I mostly do vertical. My horizontal S curves are not not as good. Just a few more. All right. Now uh, we'll move on to something that's a little bit more of a fundamental drawing than just a warm-up but since we're going to be dealing with the neck today i want to cover uh cylinders uh, just a little bit just a basic cylinder um here's a cylinder okay it's it's two straight lines or roughly straight and then an oval at the end um 
and then a little half oval at the other end, and boom, that's really all there is to it. The tricky part is uh, getting the angle of this oval right. Um, an oval, uh, or an ellipse, I keep saying oval, I guess ellipse is the, uh, the preferred terminology. Let me try to get a good one here. That's really bad. Okay, so an ellipse has what's called a major axis, which is the longest side, and a minor axis, which is the shortest side. Um, and when we draw uh, a cylinder that is capped off with an ellipse, we want to make sure that the um, the sort of the center line there uh, runs straight through the minor axis. We don't want to do something like this. Uh, I mean, that's fine if you're drawing, you know, a hypodermic needle or something. That's good. But this doesn't look like a regular old cylinder. Um, and it certainly doesn't if we put the, if we have that center line go through the major axis. This looks extremely distorted. You know, maybe if we had a very wide uh, sort of uh, flattened tube, but for a cylindrical you know, round tube. We want to make sure that we're doing the, uh, that we have the center line going through the minor axis. Um, these don't have a lot of perspective uh, applied. So the, um, these lines are all kind of parallel. So we don't really have to worry about the center line. But for example, if I were going to do a cylinder that were, was like really receding into the background uh, like in perspective we would want to make sure we had that center line here so we can track that that center line is going through the minor axis of the cylinder or of the um, of that ellipse um, so that's just a quick uh, quick overview of, of uh, cylinders and the way you um, determine the angle of the ellipse at the end. That's useful for drawing tires on cars or all, all kinds of stuff. But what I want to do right now is rather than doing these kind of formal um, straight uh, cylinders, I want to just have some, some slightly curving ones make kind of different widths, make some thick wide ones like a disc maybe, and just uh, try to uh, just try to put the end caps on in a way that looks right. Um, you know you the more narrow you make it the the more it's going to look like we're looking from the side and only slightly toward the top or bottom. Um, the wider you make that oval, the more it looks like we're looking at the uh, the end of the, of the cylinder. And then, for good measure, you can uh, you can wrap some rubber bands around it. This is always a good uh, practice just to uh, really develop your sense of form. Um, looking at what you guys are doing, there's some good stuff here. I see some people. Uh, sort of uh, stretching these out like uh, slinkies or, or like uh, bendy tubes of some kind. You can also uh, flare it out so it's more of like a cone or like a, that one's kind of like a megaphone or something. And then uh, wrap those lines. We'll just do a little bit more of this. But this should set us up, warm us up good for what we're about to move into. You might also try doing the end first, drawing the lines out from there. I think that ought to be good. Um, so that's warm-ups, and now we will move into the actual anatomy. Um, 
So I'm going to start out by showing you guys um, a little bit of the bones that we're going to be dealing with here. Um, the most important uh, parts are going to be the, um, the clavicle, the collarbone, uh, and the scapula, the shoulder blade. Um, and these are going to be the bony landmarks. Remember last week I talked about bony landmarks, the, the places on the body where the bone is right up against the surface. Um, they're often places where a lot of muscles uh, attach and, and come together. And they're really good, uh, really good things to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with um, to orient ourselves in the body and um, to just kind of uh, organize the anatomy. Um, so we can see it's it's really interesting the way the um, this is called the shoulder shoulder girdle. The um, this whole Here's a quick uh, stick figure, like I've been showing. There's the hips, there's the shoulders, there's the head. And the shoulder girdle is this whole area right here. Um, if we were to look from the top, let's see. Those are, some, those are the shoulders, let's say, the line of the shoulders from the top. This is the uh, end of the collarbone right there. And uh, rib cage. And the collarbones are going to kind of wrap around in the front and then the scapula is going to wrap around in the back um, and it's not going to go all the way obviously but it's going to go part of the way we've got the spine right there there um, and it's going to create this uh, this sort of encirclement um, around the uh, upper part of the rib cage so the rib cage would actually be kind of like this and then we've got the collarbones coming up to the edge of the shoulder there, and then the scapula going down and back. Um, here you can see, let's get the color. You can see how the scapula extends from the center there, uh, not the scapula, the uh, clavicle, collarbone, out to this um, this point of the shoulder, and then it attaches to the. Uh, shoulder blade, the scapula that runs down behind. Um, here we can see it from the other side. So the collarbone swoops up to the edge from the from the center of the the pit of the neck here, kind of swoops in like an S curve up to the point of the shoulder, and then it turns and it comes back with this uh, shoulder blade here. Um, let's see, here are a couple of, um, this is one of the actual collarbones. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure which, uh, which direction we're looking at it from, but this is just to show that it's got an interesting S curve. It's like a perfect S there. Um, so, oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, I talked last time about the seventh cervical vertebrae. Um, which is uh, another important bony landmark. That's going to be right here. It is the uh, the last vertebrae of the uh, of the neck portion of the spine, um, and it sticks up higher than the rest of them. And uh, that's going to be an important uh, landmark for placing our trapezius muscles. So, having shown all of that, I'm going to go ahead and get into drawing it. Um, so, let's see. Here we go. So I'm going to start once more with just a basic uh, mannequin, just to, to give you um, an example of how this is all going to fit together. So we start with a basic line for the whole length of the figure, put the hips right in the center, right in the middle. Um, and then we go up two thirds and we put the shoulders. Halfway between the hips and shoulders is the natural waist. Put in some mass for the torso there. Above the neck, above the, the shoulders, the shoulder line there, um, the head is going to take up two thirds of that space, with uh, the last third just being the neck. Um, I'll throw the legs in there, although those aren't important today. Figure the more you guys get to see this mannequin, the more it's going to help. Uh, you know, we'll we'll go over this so many times 
in this uh, in this series. Um, arms, uh, elbows fall at the waist, wrists fall at the the hip line, and again, this hip line is the uh, the part that sticks out widest at the um, at the thigh, the uh, where the where the thigh bone attaches to the uh, pelvis. Hands hang down to about mid thigh. Okay, so this is a basic um, basic mannequin, and I'll go ahead and uh, knock this back, and we'll go in closer, and I will deal with uh, what we're going to be doing specifically today. I'm only gonna just barely touch on the head because uh, that really is going to require its own uh, week of study at least but uh, the head takes up two-thirds of that space a nice little oval the skull um, will extend back put a line across the middle line across the middle and that's about as far as we'll go today uh, but we do need a head in there just to show how the neck connects um, so this is the line of the shoulders right and this is kind of abstract since the bones um, we saw that these, uh, that there's these kind of swoopy up and down, back and forth kind of motions to the collarbone. Um, so we'll see how that, uh, comes into place. But, um, so at the center here, we've got the pit of the neck. I'm going to put like a little V here. Um, and then the collarbones are going to kind of swoop up in an S curve to this, uh, Point of the shoulder here. This is called the, um, I believe it's the acromion process, um, and it's just a flat bony area right on the top of your shoulder, like above where your uh, deltoid muscle starts, um, but you can feel it yourself uh, on your own body. There's just this flat bony area. No matter how uh, thin or how heavy you are, everybody's got a bony area there. Um, and that is the place where the clavicle, uh, the collarbone, the shoulder blade in the back, uh, and the upper arm bone all fit together. Anybody have any questions on that so far? No, I'm good. Okay, great. Um, all right, so uh, we got the collarbone running up to that point. Um, we'll just deal with the front for right now, uh, and then we'll turn around and look at the back a little bit later. Um, I want to focus on this uh, pit of the neck, uh, also called the uh, clavicular notch, um, but we'll just call it the pit of the neck. Um, right below the ears on the, on the head, we're going to have um, two muscles. You know what, let me start with the, with the kind of cylinder of the neck. This is part a big part of why I wanted to start out with cylinders. Let's just have a cylinder kind of coming straight down just right through. If we were to look at this uh, from the top, this uh, this um, shoulder girdle, uh, right there is the pit of the neck. Um, the neck is just going to kind of, this, this uh, column of the neck is just going to sit right in the middle there. Um, so that's what uh, this is here. We're going to have from the from the from beneath the ears, kind of right behind the the jaw. There, we're going to get these muscles, these sternocleidomastoid muscles, that run down to the pit of the neck. So it just kind of makes a little V. In fact, the whole thing together almost makes an M, um, but that depends on. The angle you're looking for it looking at it from and everything um but so these muscles come down to the center we'll we'll we'll, we'll get a little more in depth in those muscles later on um they meet at the middle of the clavicular notch there and then in the back um sort of right below or right about at the level of the chin we'll see and it this depends on how uh muscular the person is um, but we'll see the, uh, trapezius muscles running down also right to that, uh, acromion process, right to, let me just Google that real quick and make sure I'm saying that right. I would hate to be saying the wrong name. 
Um, yep, I'm that's pretty the, sure you are. <laughs> yeah, that's the acromion process. Thank you. Um, and uh, so kind of everything, a, a lot of stuff is all going to run right to that area. Um, so we've got the trapezius running down there, also running down here. And that makes a nice S curve as well. It's going to like that. Um, from there, uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put in like a little, this is just going to stand for kind of the upper arm bone, the humerus. Um, and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll stick these, uh, remember this is the top view, right? We're looking straight down. Uh, this is the front of the body, the uh, pit of the neck here. In the back, we've got the shoulder blades. Um, and the deltoid muscle, which, which we're going to include today, um, because it ties in very kind of significantly with all of this stuff. Uh, the deltoid muscle kind of wraps around at the top. It wraps around this, uh, this acromion process and extends in kind of like an upside down teardrop shape to about halfway down the upper arm. So it's going to kind of look like this. Not going to deal with the uh, the other upper arm muscles uh, today, but um, yeah, the whole thing kind of wraps around uh, the um, around this acromion process here, and the deltoid muscle is split into three muscles. Just draw some over here. Here's the acromion process. Deltoid muscle has the um, there's the front head here, which you can feel on the front of your shoulder. There's the uh, lateral head, the side head there. And then in the back, there is the, uh, the posterior head, the rear head that attaches to the shoulder blade. Um, and let's see, here's just a side view. The lateral head is the largest. The, um, that's the one on the side. The uh, front head, the uh, anterior head, is the second largest. And the uh, posterior head, the rear head, is the smallest. And um, unless a person is pretty muscular, you usually won't see it that much. But it's there. Um, so uh, that's the front. I'll do the back real quick. And then... Um, I'll ask for questions, and then I'll just do some uh, demos so we can kind of go through the material a few times. Um, so here's the back. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole figure because we don't really need it. I'm just going to do the, um, that'll be the shoulder line. And uh, right about there is the waist. We don't really need to do the torso here, but it's fine. Okay, those will be the uh, acromion process right there. And then... Uh, I've been saying that the head takes up a third of the space above the above the shoulder line, um, which is true. But in the back, since I'm going to deal with the um, with the back of the skull first, it actually is about halfway. That's the back of the skull, and then if we put the jaw on, it would go down to like taking up that full. chat nope nothing in chat okay we're good all right um so from here we're going to deal with the um with the collar uh with the shoulder blades so they're going to come down off the uh off the acromion process like almost everything does here and it's going to be this perfect little kind of upside down l um let me bring those bones back so as you can see the uh the shoulder blade itself is a pretty complicated shape um if you were to try to draw it entirely but as far as what we need at this point um for learning this sort of simplified version of anatomy we don't need much more than this uh than this sort of l shape here um the top of the L, I want to stress that this top of this inverted L here 
uh, refers to this part of the scapula, um, not this part up here. All of this is kind of buried beneath muscles and, and you won't really see it. Uh, but this right here, this is called the spine of the scapula. And this is a bony landmark. You can feel it on your back. Uh, everybody's scapula kind of touches the surface right there. Um, as well as at the interior border, the um, medial border of the scapula, uh, this is also a bony landmark. Um, we're going to get muscles attaching to it from the inside. Um, there's muscles that lay over the scapula itself. Uh, there's muscles that attach to it over here. Um, but the, even despite the complicated shape of the scapula, it's not really going to be that important for us for the most part. Mostly what we need is just this. So when the body is at rest, the, um, the scapula will tend to angle down a little bit toward the middle, just, just like the, uh, collarbones angle down in the front a little bit. Um, the scapula, it, it, it's almost a mirror up. It's going to angle down in the back. Um, so let's go ahead and put the muscles and stuff on. Get rid of this again. And, um, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll put that column of the neck in. Um, we don't really need to worry about the specific muscles that make up that column of the neck. Uh, it's mostly the muscles on the side, like the scalenes and stuff like that, but you don't really see much definition in those muscles. So we can kind of treat the whole thing as uh, just a cylinder. Um, however, from right about, okay, so we put in the C7, the seventh cervical vertebrae, like I was talking about before. It's a little bit higher than the, uh, than the level of the shoulders there. Um, and, uh, let's see, change my colors again. I'll put in the trapezius is going to, it's this muscle that kind of runs down from, uh, either side of the spine, uh, kind of up to the base of the skull and it spreads out and reaches to the acromion process like that in that kind of nice S curve. So it's the same as we, as we looked at over here, we're just seeing it in the back and then it goes right across the top of that uh, spine of the scapula. And as for the C7 there, the seventh cervical vertebrae, it sort of loops around it. You'll actually see, even on a very muscular person with big uh, bulging trapezius muscles, you'll still see this one little nodule of the of the spine poking through right there um it's kind of like a little diamond shape uh, and then i'll cover this part in more detail when we actually do the uh the back of the torso rather than just the shoulders but the trapezius itself is this almost diamond shaped muscle with uh with the c7 in the middle there um but all of this stuff this doesn't so much attach to the uh the uh interior or the medial border of the scapula but it does run kind of in between it to the uh to the spine and then there are some other muscles that attach in there but we're not going to worry about that right now um the important thing is just to understand how the trapezius comes down from uh, the base of the skull runs down the neck and then spreads out across the back, uh, across the upper uh, back, like across the shoulder area, and connects right, uh, right at that acromion process. And all of these muscles, they're going to leave a little, uh, little flat gap on the top. Um, okay, so let me put in those upper arm bones the humerus. Um, let me change my color again. So from the back, we're going to see the uh, the rear head of the deltoid. Remember, the deltoid is going to come off of that uh, off of that acromion process, run about halfway down the arm. Go 
go ahead and finish those arm bones just so we can know what we're looking at. Um, so this is going to run about halfway down. And then the uh, posterior head of the deltoid is uh, going to extend across the shoulder blade maybe about half. Let me... Um, Let me take a quick pressure on that. Uh, yeah, that looks about right. Yeah, it, it's going to extend. Let's see. It's going to kind of fit into into this notch over here. So the other side. Uh, and that is most of it. Uh, does anybody have any questions on that so far? Doesn't sound like it. Not, not right. from me, no. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, guys, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to speak up. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep going ahead from now. Um, so right now I'm just going to do a few drawings, just some little demos, and I'll just kind of talk through, uh, whatever I think is uh, relevant. So um, I'm just going to do these little, uh, I'm not going to worry about the whole uh, mannequin. I'm just going to do the kind of head and shoulders and upper torso part. So there's the, uh, there's the, the head. Um, we got the clavicles coming up to uh, the uh, shoulder have those arms raised that's one thing i don't think i'm going to really get into it right now but it's important to understand that the uh the shoulder blades move around a lot and we're going to look at some uh, reference pictures a little later and we'll see how in some of those you can see the shoulder blades really moving but they'll like uh you know they'll start out like this and then if someone raises the arms they're going to go like way out like this but we'll talk about that later probably all right, so um, collarbones, let's see. I usually like to put in the sternocleidomastoids first because it's just a nice little, um, it's like a nice little triangle or a little V. Um, and then I'll, I'll put in the, the uh, column of the neck after. Trapezius goes right to there, uh, to that to the chromium process. Um, the trapezius muscle itself, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll expand this a little bit and I will um, do some additional drawing over the top. Um, let's just put some deltoid on there. So front head, side head, back head is mostly hidden from this angle. All right, so I'll do a little bit more detailed drawing here. Just the head. Uh, okay, I'm gonna start actually putting in the shape of the muscles a little bit. There's just kind of a notch for the for the clavicle we've got this uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle I want kind of want everybody to feel that right now like when you turn your head uh, if you feel in the front of your neck you'll feel when you turn strongly to one side you'll feel that muscle really pop out and I just want you to kind of reach up and and feel the way it runs to up right underneath your your ear um and feel how you know it's kind of broad and flat up there it's like a strap and then as it as it comes down toward the front of the neck it gets it turns more uh cylindrical and it kind of narrows like this but there's also 
a little offshoot here. There's like a fork in the road. Um, so this muscle actually splits into two uh, branches. Uh, this is called the uh, sternal branch because it connects to the sternum right there, the bone that runs down the middle of the chest. And this is called the clavicular branch because it kind of like takes a little detour and, and connects to the clavicle. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle is going to kind of look like this. Um, there's also the uh, front of the neck. Um, depending on the person, you may have more or less of a uh, Adam's apple, uh, like a cartilage kind of protrusion in the front of the neck. That's going to, it's going to kind of poke out in front of the sternocleidomastoids toward the top, but near the bottom, it's going to like pull back and going to create like a hollow uh, between those two muscles. Um, and this is almost, can almost be a little bit squarish, kind of cuboid. Um, now let's deal with the trapezius. Get that nice S curve. These arms are up. Uh, so that means that the trapezius would be kind of contracted uh, and like bulging a bit. Um, put in some deltoid here. Um, okay, so now I'm going to show you, or uh, you know what? I'm going to do another one because I don't like that one for this demo. There's another one. Just knock that back and do a little more detail. Okay, uh, so here again, notch of the clavic of the pit of the neck. This, uh, we're going to have that kind of S curve as it curves up and back. Sternocleidomastoids, column of the neck, trapezius. It's a really nice little pattern there. It seems like a, a complicated um structure and and it is but if you just learn like where these lines start and where they go it, it becomes really easy to to construct it and um you know you're going to need to learn the specifics of the muscles and bones if you really want to get a um highly accurate anatomy for like realistic drawing but if you're doing something a little more cartoony or you know that isn't like highly detailed this will be all you need um so now I want to I want to point out a couple of really interesting things, and this is kind of a big part of the reason why I included the deltoid um, in this uh, class because the deltoid is usually considered part of the arm more than part of the neck, but it does have a really interesting relationship here, which is that um, okay, so there's a thick part of the trapezius here. Uh, you know, you can reach up and feel that yourself uh, if you pinch the you know, the, the part of your neck and shoulders, the, the trapezius part, you can feel that there's a thick part here that kind of is rounded like this, and then it kind of sinks like this. You know, so if we're looking from the side, um, we'll see the trapezius, it kind of goes like, like this. And the neck kind of comes out here. Um, so there's this thick portion here, and uh, let me let me do a quick drawing of the front of the. Uh, this is this is another top view. Um, of the uh, collarbones and the well the whole shoulder girdle really, um, but uh, there's the neck. This right here. This uh, thick part of the trapezius, that's right here, okay? Um, and the really interesting thing is that, like I said, it's kind of an S-curve for the, the collarbone, but you can also think of it as like having three segments. Um, and the, trape the thick part of the trapezius is going to run right to where it covers uh, or it connects alongside the 
third like outside segment of that uh, collarbone. There's the acromion process there. Um, and then the uh, deltoid is going to go, we got the, uh, the scapula, the shoulder blade right there. The rear deltoid is going to kind of cover about half of that. The front deltoid is going to go right on the other side of that. So isn't that convenient? We've got the, the trapezius running straight to this segment here. This uh, one, two, three, it's running straight to that third segment there. And then right on the other side of that bone, the uh, deltoid kind of picks up where the trapezius left off. Um, the uh, lateral head of the deltoid kind of wraps just right around this acromion process here. The uh, or, uh, anterior, the front head of the deltoid, is going to fill in the space along the uh, collarbone there. And then the uh, posterior head of the deltoid is going to fill up that space that covers a portion of the uh, clavicle back there. Uh, the uh, scapula, the shoulder blade. I need to settle on some terminology here. I keep saying scapula, clavicle, shoulder blade, collarbone, mixing myself up. Um, Bony bits. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many, uh, too many names. Too many. A lot of the bones don't have like common names. You know, they just have the the Latin. Um, but then there are the bones like the collarbones, like the shoulder blade, that have very common names. But anyway, um, so like I was saying here, we got the trapezius running down into this uh, segment here, attaching right to that like outer portion of the collarbone, and then the deltoid is going to take over right there so it's just it's so convenient it's it's so elegant i love it um so let's see that's most of that there's one more thing uh that i really let me go back and do some of this um so this is all bulging bulging these bulge it leaves us with this kind of hollow here it doesn't well, it doesn't necessarily dip in like extremely, but it it uh, it does kind of it does kind of fall back compared to the bulge of the trapezius and of the uh, of the neck. There's one more thing. There's a little muscle called the omohyoideus, uh, which is a crazy name, um, and it's just a little narrow muscle that kind of runs. It goes up like this, like up through the neck. Um, and sometimes you see that sticking out through that uh, through that uh, space. I think uh, let's see in the picture I drew here. Uh, that's the uh, that's the bit here. Um, so let me do a few more little uh, a few more little drawings. Oops. Oops. There we go. Um, let me just, oh, you know what? I didn't do a back view. Okay, so this will be from the back. This is the shoulder line, chromium process, shoulder blades. Uh, let's see, we'll do the back of the skull there, the front of the skull on there. Um, seventh cervical vertebrae, about right there. Column of the neck. Coming from right below the skull, trapezius, S curve, running from the base of the skull, just right out to that acromion process. Super convenient. Shoulder blade's a little big. Um, and then we've got the deltoid coming off of there. Um, we don't we're not going to deal with the muscles out here right now um, the uh, remember that the, the trapezius is going to attach along the uh, spine of the scapula there Let's see. A little bit more I'm gonna do like a whole figure here Let's 
so we can just kind of see how all of this stuff fits together. Hand on the hip pose. All right. And now we're going to have column of the neck. Um, depending on the sort of heaviness and muscularity of the figure, uh, the neck will take up, if this is the head, the neck on a very, uh, like a slender woman, for example, the neck might barely take up half of the space of the head. Um, or like on a, on a skinny child, uh, whereas on like a big burly man, the neck might be like the full width of the head or, or even more in extreme examples. Um, so, uh, and that's just, uh, you know, just the muscles being bigger, but, uh, you know, yeah, just anywhere from, uh, about a half of the head width of the head to the whole width of the head is, is about, uh, what you're going to see for the width of the neck. Here we'll, we'll have kind of a medium-sized neck, trapezius stretching out to that uh, to that acromion process, delta. Let's see, let's put in the shoulder blades, deltoid running off the shoulder blade, C7 right there. And I'll go ahead and throw in the lower portion of the trapezius, even though. Doing that right now. Okay. Um, and then I'll do another one from the front. I'll tilt this one a little bit so we can look down at the neck. Um, alrighty. Chromium process is here. Pit of the uh, pit of the neck. I do want to point out that when I'm constructing these figures and I'm just putting in these lines, this line here, this shoulder line, for example, this is an abstract line. It doesn't stand for a, uh, it doesn't stand for any particular bones. It actually, uh, let's see, here we've got, we're, we've got a top view um, of the uh, shoulder girdle. This, this line, uh, the line of the shoulders, it more stands for a straight line from one uh, acromion process to the other. It doesn't, it doesn't stand for the uh, collarbones or the scapula. Um, just keep that in mind. So when you put this line in, don't you don't think don't think that you have to tie all your muscles into that. You can kind of dictate where the collarbones are from there. Uh, you know, if if the person if the angle is such that we're looking why am I getting okay? Uh, if the angle is such that we're looking like up at it, then we may actually see the collarbones curve down uh, like this, um, just because of the perspective. Uh, but in any case, okay. So here, I've started this uh, figure here. Put a little indication of the shoulder blades in the back. Um, so like I said, I usually like to put the um, sternocleidomastoid in first, uh, just because that, that's a very convenient um, like place to hold on to, that, that uh, pit of the neck. Put in the uh, column of the neck, trapezius, pretty easy. Um, Let's find go ahead and put a little more detail on that collarbone, give it more of a specific shape, that S curve shape, and that outer third where it turns again, that's where the uh, trapezius, the thick part of the trapezius is going to run to, and then that's where the uh, deltoid is going to start on the other side. Here, right. same thing, deltoid, all right, um, any questions?
Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Uh, so lastly, we will go on and uh, look at some reference pictures. So I'm just going to go through these. I picked out a few here, and I'm just going to kind of point out some of the some of the features. Um, so let's start with this woman up here. Um, let's see. Oh, she's got a piercing there. That's cool. Okay, so here's the pit of the neck right here. We can see the uh, a different color. There we go. Okay. Um, so there's the pit of the neck, sternum coming down here. We can see the uh, sternal branch of the sternocleidomastoid um, standing out really strongly there. It's like a little sharp uh, like wire almost. Um, and we can kind of see it coming up here, uh, but not so much on that side. But we can see it really standing out here, and we can also see kind of the hollow of the neck. Here's the protruding uh, sort of cart cartilage part of the upper neck. Um, there's the whole column of the neck. And we can see the trapezius running down. Um, check this out. Look at how it runs right there to that outer section. Then the deltoid picks up on the other side of it. That's my favorite thing. It's just so cool. When I learned that, I, I couldn't believe how simple that was. Um, we can see the delt, the trapezius running. Uh, we can't really see the, the collarbone or the um, the shoulder blade in the back, but we can kind of see where the trapezius runs down right here. We could see that the uh, rear deltoid would be right back there. Okay, on this side now, I, I can't even really see her collarbone there, but um, it would probably be running like something like this. And... Uh, yeah, we can see the very edge of the, you know, she's turned away from us, so most of the trapezius is hidden, but we can kind of see it right there. And then the deltoid starting on the other side of that. Um, all right, so let's see. Let's go over. Uh, she's cool. Uh, let's see. Here we've got the arms uh, coming up. So the shoulder blade starts to turn outward. Um, it's really interesting. Uh, the arms and the shoulder blades and everything are only attached to the skeleton by the, um, by the, uh, collarbones. Um, the collarbones attach, uh, right at the top of the sternum here. Um, and they swoop out to the shoulder and then the shoulder blade is only attached to the edge of that sternum there and it just floats over the back of the rib cage um, and the arm is also attached right there so as the arm uh, moves up and down uh, the collarbone moves up and down and the uh, shoulder blade kind of comes along for the ride um, it's kind of crazy to think all of that stuff is as far as the bones go only attached to the sternum uh, that's how it is um, so okay, let me find my reference there again. All right, so let's see. It's probably more like I don't know, that. Um, you can see the dip right here where the uh, acromion process is. You can see the trapezius running down there. Um, I'm actually kind of having trouble. I think maybe right there where the borders of the scapula are and you can see the easiest kind of running like that there's the seven cervical vertebrae right there um, deltoids extending here you can kind of see evidence of the uh, lateral head front head here uh, let's see You can kind of see how this bulge is a little. I'm actually not sure where the edge of that uh, scapula is there. Oh well. Okay. Um, this guy's easier. Let's take a look at this guy. Um, we can see very clearly 
the uh, spine of the scapula and the medial border. Spine, medial border. We can see right here a little bit of a, this guy's kind of slender. We can see a little bump uh, for the um, chromium process. Kind of a truism that uh, with all of these bony landmarks uh, on a very slim person, a very skinny person, we're going to see them protruding as like a little like notch of bone sticking out. And on a heavier person, we're going to see them receding as the flesh kind of uh, swells around it. Um, but yeah, so here we can see that uh, acromion process. The uh, deltoid's going to kind of hang down off of that. Um, you know, he doesn't have a lot of muscular definition, so we don't really see it, but the rear deltoid would be here. Um, here we actually can kind of see the rear deltoid on this one. Right there. Um, C7 right there. We can see here we can we can see the column of the neck and we can see how the trapezius lays on top of it. So it runs out to the acromion process. It term, it's terminated at the uh, spine of the scapula. And then it would kind of come down like this. Let's see. All right. So here we have some good, uh, you can really see the, the neck and the clavicles and stuff here. Um, this is an example of when the head is turned strongly to one side, how much the uh, sternocleidomastoid really pops out. Um, so here we have hit of the neck again, collarbones, chromium process, sternocleidomastoids, column of the neck, trapezius. It's so convenient how everything just runs to that acromion process um, or to that pit of the neck there. Um, deltoids coming from here. Let's see. It's going to be the thick part there. Deltoid coming right there. All right. Another one. Some of this is hidden in shadow, so it's a little difficult, but it's not too bad. Um, Wrap out those collarbones. Because of the angle here, you can really see a kind of S curve here. Um, sternocleidomastoids. Here's that uh, protruding cartilage portion of the neck, and then the way it recedes down here. Uh, trapezius running to the acromion process. And then I think that might be the omohyoid that I talked about, the omohyoidius. Um, little weird little cylindrical muscle that kind of pops up, especially if you uh, flex your neck. You can see it pop up in that hollow there. Um, okay, trapezius, and then right on the other side of the trapezius, the deltoid. Let's see what else we got. Oops. Okay, um, this guy again, uh, and now his back is kind of flexing, hunched up so we can see more of the, more of the stuff. Um, so there's our C7, there's our chromium process. Um, we can see, the, right here, we can very clearly see the spine of the scapula. Look at how there's this, uh, this divot here. And the muscles of the scapula, like the muscles that overlie the scapula, are bulging up a little bit. The uh, trapezius is bulging up a little bit. Um, here's the medial border of the scapula. Here you can see some of the muscles that run off of it. We're not going to talk about that right now. Um, we just want to deal with these, uh, these important landmarks. You can see... This is a really good one for seeing how the trapezius just fits into the top of that uh, collarbone there, or um, shoulder blade. Uh, here you can actually see a little bit of the uh, edge of the trapezius as it runs down the middle there. Rear deltoid.
built wood side or uh, lateral deltoid. Okay, this guy. This is a cool, this is a good side view kind of. Um, so here we've got the pit of the neck. We can see the uh, the uh, sternocleidomastoids running down there. We can see the uh, trapezius running to the chromium process here. Also kind of going across the scapula in the back. You can see the rear deltoid there. You can see the lateral deltoid there. A little bit of the front deltoid there, maybe. Um, all of those kind of wrapping around the acromion process. Um, can't really see the medial border. I don't think. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah. You totally can. It's right there. Then you can kind of see this other shoulder blade sticking out back there. Um, now let's go to this big buff dude over here. Um, he's got his arms way up. Um, once you, when you start raising your arms, like if you hang your arms down at your side and then you start raising them, you get to about where your arms are sticking straight out to the side, like T posing, um, before your shoulder blades start coming up. But that's about, uh, as much range of motion as the upper arm actually has in the socket. Uh, and then beyond that, as you start to raise your arms higher, the, um, the whole like collarbone and shoulder blade assembly will start to rise up, which is why, okay. So like this guy here, we can see the acromion process. Uh, actually that's another thing I want to point out. Um, I talked, let's see. I talked with this one about, you know, on this more slender guy, we can see how it's sticking up. It's like a little bony point right there. Whereas on this really massively muscular guy, we can see how it's a divot um, because the muscles are all built up around it. Uh, but in any case, you know, that's, and that's also really an interesting example of, I mean, this is where, this is the bone structure right here. And all of this extra meat around here is just because this guy is so buff, you know, like his, his actual bones aren't bigger than anybody else, bigger than some people, but uh, he probably has a relatively average skeleton. And he's just got all this massive muscle built up around it. Um, you can also see this is the C7, uh, which, you know, is just kind of like a little, little kind of barely visible bump on a lot of people. But here, because his uh, trapezius is bulging up, you can really see how it's this, uh, this deep divot with all of this muscle bulging out around it. Um, so we've got the uh, border of the scapula. I think, I think it's about there. We've got the trapezius kind of tucking into the top there. You got the uh, rear deltoid uh, attaching to the to the scapula there. You got the front and uh, side deltoids. And everything all wrapping around that uh, acromion process. All right, let's see. I don't know if we need to do that one. That's kind of just more of the same. Um, here's another one where you can see the, uh, let's see. It's kind of tough to find the border of the scapula there, but it's, it's way winged out because this guy's arm is way up. Here's the divot of the um, chromium process. You can see the uh, rear deltoid there. It all wraps around that chromium process. Kind of having trouble finding the scapula there, but it's there somewhere. Um, all righty. Uh, any questions on this part? No, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Ooh, okay, we're uh, just about out of time. Um, I'm going to do just a couple more little uh, little demos. 
Um, I really want to just emphasize, like, this might not be useful to you depending on how you draw, but to me, this, um, this is practically magic. Whoops. This little, uh, okay, got the shoulder line, the head, and the way you can just go little V for the, for the sternocleidomastoids, drop those lines down for the uh, column of the neck, and then drop these down to the for, for the trapezius to the uh, chromium process. Um, and then if you want, you can kind of put in that thickness and have the trapezius or the uh, deltoid start on the other side of that. Like this is just crazy to me how simple that is. Um, so I'll just do a few more of those. Head, neck, okay. Trapezi or uh, sternocleidomastoids column of the neck, trapezius, deltoids, and I'll do a back one again. Okay. Let's see, let's have the arms raised here, collarbones in the front, the, the Shoulder blades are going to be really, really raised up here. And I have the uh, deltoids right there. Easiest is going to be kind of bunched up. Alrighty. Um, let me see. Bring up some of this stuff. Oh, that's the. Go. Alrighty. Um, so that's the uh, lesson for today, guys. Uh, I hope everybody uh, learned some valuable stuff. Um, we will continue working our way through the body. It'll probably take us. I'm gonna guess another six weeks, uh, six or eight weeks, depending on how detailed uh, we end up going. Um, homework today is going to be, uh, just give me 10, uh, necks and shoulders. You know, you don't have to draw the whole figure. Just give me the base, uh, part of the, uh, the base part of the, um, mannequin. You can kind of just do the, uh, shoulder line head like this and just build it from there. Give me a few different angles, a few different poses. It doesn't have to be really detailed. Just make sure that the uh, major anatomical uh, features are all visible. Um, I'm not sure if I gave homework last week. I know last week was kind of a, uh, a uh, I, I know I kind of dropped the ball on creating the channel. So uh, apologies for that if I did give homework. Uh, but last week was kind of just a primer on the, uh, um, the bony landmarks. And we're going to cover those in detail as we go forward. So um, just 10 necks and shoulders. Um, you can post them in the homework channel that I will create shortly and, uh, that'll be it. Any last questions or anything? Not for me. I guess not. Okay. Thank you, Brandon. Not. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Um, good luck and, uh, I will see you all next week. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you. Take care.